Hey, so do you live in condemnation, guilt? Are you always putting yourself down, saying you're sorry, living in regret? If that's you, this message is for you today. This is Vision Eternity Ministries, and my name is Lee Klein. Jesus is getting us ready for his return. He's making it so we have no spots or wrinkles, so we don't lack anything, so we can be that confident bride waiting for his return, knowing we did all he asked us to do, knowing that we prepared the way for him. We prepared the way for him. Can you imagine that, having that important of a job? That's the job that we have. We are called to do his work to prepare the way for King Jesus. Let's acknowledge him, Jesus. We thank you so much that you're using us to prepare the way for you, that you're getting us ready, that you're teaching us what we need to do to be ready, that you're telling us things to come. We just give you all the praise and all the glory for that. We thank you for your revelation knowledge today, for your teaching, for teaching us your way, giving us the things we need to know to be that overcomer you're calling us to be. We love you and praise you and give you all the glory. So did you know you were called to be an overcomer? Do you know we're not supposed to just lay down and let the enemy walk all over us? like the world does. He's controlling the world. But us, we as Christians, we don't have to put up with him. And we need to not put up with him so we can teach the world who Jesus is and the authority that we have. He is always trying to condemn us, make us feel bad about ourselves. From little on, he just tries to always do something to make us feel less than and that's why so many people put on a facade. But then they go home and they finish beating themselves up from the day before because they're listening to the voice of the enemy. He's always condemning. He's always trying to put you down. He's trying to steal joy, your joy, your peace, your contentment, your, your life that Jesus came to give you. I have come, Jesus said, to give you life. Give it to the full until it overflows. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to have a good life. He said in that same sentence, but the enemy has come to still kill and destroy. We have to understand that he comes in your thinking, in your sublim subliminal thinking. He, he's trying to be so discreet so that you think it's you talking to you, but it's actually him. Corinthians tells us to take captive every thought and that is because he's going to come in your thinking and try to control you. He's going to say, oh, do you remember what you did last night? That was terrible. Look at the example you're setting. You know, blah, 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 blah. He's going on and on and on until you start sinking back and feeling really bad about yourself. You have to go to Jesus and be reassured by him of what a wonderful person you are how good you are. I want to read to you Romans 8, 1. There is no condemnation, no a judging guilty of wrong for those who are in Christ Jesus, who live and walk not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the Spirit. For the law of spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the law of our new being, has freed us from the law of sin and death. If you're seeking God all the time, and you're looking to him, to follow him. My sheep know my voice, and they follow me. And when we're following him, you can know because you have that joy, that peace, and that happiness. But like Jesus said, I just want to tell you how to recognize what's happening. Like Jesus said, as soon as you hear the word, as soon as you're done fellowshipping with Jesus, um, you know, the enemy just waves in and out. You never know when he's going to come, but he comes. And he tries to take that joy from you by condemning you. And even though you heard Jesus talk to you, he's going to come and say, did God, really, did God really say, you can't do that. That's not what he meant. You have to pay for your sin when you don't have to pay for your sin. It's already been paid for you if you made a mistake. But most of the time, we haven't even done anything wrong. He's just working so hard to condemn us 
to, to get us to live in guilt so that we're not following after the Spirit, so that we turn away from God. And I've heard many people say they do that. As, as soon as I start walking with God, then all of a sudden it just gets too hard. All this pressure comes on me, and I just can't keep going. The enemy is always going to come and tear you down, and we got to recognize that because we are called to do his work, and we can't do it when we're letting the enemy constantly pull on us. And not only is he, he pulling us on us and making us feel bad about ourselves um, to steal our time, our peace, our joy, and contentment, but then he tries to add a vice to that. Oh, you're going to feel better about yourself if you eat this or if you do this drug or if you drink alcohol or, or if you just treat someone else um, badly and make yourself. I mean, you don't, you don't intentionally have those thoughts, but he gives you those those thoughts way back in your mind. And then you do those thoughts. You're actually listening to him and obeying him. And I want to tell you, he gets a big kick out of that. He's sitting by laughing because you think you think that you're talking to yourself or you think that, you know, all these lies and really he's just controlling you. He's controlling you. He is. Because he wants to kill, steal, and destroy in your life. He hates God, so he hates you. Because God loves you, he's going to condemn you. He's going he's gonna to do all he can to drag you down and make you feel ugly, depressed. He's going to harass and oppress you with horrible, horrible thoughts about yourself. And everything's your fault. This is your fault. That's your fault. Look what happened. That's your fault. Um, then what I was going to say, what he does next is to get that vice happening in your life, you know, the food or the alcohol or whatever, so that you have, now you have a God before God as well. You're serving that thing instead of God because you feel bad about yourself. And he's saying, if you eat this, if you do that, you're going to feel better. And the only way you're going to feel better is if you go to Jesus and ask him to help you and ask him to show you the truth. And he's going to show you that the enemy's lying to you. He's trying to steal from you and you have authority to not listen to him. You have the authority over him to make him quiet. To You can bind him. You can tell him, get out of here. You're not my God. And that's what you need to do. Get out of here. You're not my God. He's just going to use anything he can. What frazzles you the most is what he's going to say to you. And everything he says to you is a lie. And so when you know that, Jesus said there's no truth in him. When you know that, that then you can know the opposite of that is true. So whatever he's telling you, you can't do that. Well, then you know you can. He's giving you heads up that you can do it. And you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You know, one of the things he likes to do is when Jesus asks you to go for him, is tell you you can't. You can't do that. You're not good enough. You're not qualified. So what Jesus is saying to us today is he needs us to go for him. And so we have to have our confidence in him. Not thinking on our own without him, but go to him and get his thoughts. Get your direction from him. And you know what? Not only that, as parents, we have to reflect that truth for our children. Our children need to know the truth because just like you, from little on, the enemy has come to try to make you feel bad about yourself, to condemn you. He tells you all these lies, and so you grow up under that impression of yourself. But when you know Jesus, he gives you that new impression of how he sees you. He sees you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And he sees the real you. You're seeing the person that the enemy is portraying in your mind. You're not really seeing you until you let Jesus set you free. 
And when we do that, we can bring up our children and the way they should go. We can do that because they're going to do what you do. And so if you're living in condemnation and guilt and, and that causes you to live in indecision because you can't decide what's right and what's wrong, then that's how your children are going to live. And you know, if you eat, they're going to eat. If you drink alcohol, they're going to drink alcohol. And in that, what you're doing is really hurting yourself. He's killing you slowly. If you're, if you're eating really bad food, you're going to be unhealthy. If you're really overweight, you're going to be unhealthy. If you're drinking alcohol, you're really drinking poison. If you're doing drugs, you're killing yourself. You know, some kids nowadays, the enemy has overtaken their life so much because the world doesn't know what's going on with their children. They don't know what's happening. They get harassed and oppressed by the enemy through their schoolmates. And the parents don't know what to do, how to help them. And so they take them to the doctor and put them on medication. And this medication has even more side effects. And so the enemy has more room and they're thinking to harass and oppress them. And we need to know what's going on so we can help our children to take captive every thought and make it like Jesus. Resist the enemy's thoughts. Take authority over him. Jesus said, I've given you power and authority over the enemy. He can't hurt you unless you let him. And if you don't train your children up in the Lord, they're not going to know what's going on when the devil comes and says, cut yourself. You're bad. It'll be a way to, it, it, it's like he's just putting Jesus down. He's taking away your freedom. Jesus died for your sin. He took your punishment. You're forgiven. So when you do something wrong, when the, when the kids are doing something wrong and they don't know that, and the enemy comes and says, you got to make it better by cutting yourself or whatever he tells them, how bad you are, and, the, and then they're cutting themselves. Kids are hanging themselves. They're killing themselves because of the voice of the enemy. And we have to stop him. We have to get revelation knowledge of what's going on as Christ followers, and take authority over the enemy in our lives. Stop listening to him so that we can help the world. Same thing's going on now as did then. Matthew 5. Um, there was this man who continually lived among the tombs, and no one could subdue him anymore, even with a chain, for he had been bound with shackles and the feet, his feet handcuffs, by the handcuffs of light chains, he wretched apart, had that much strength. And the shackles he rubbed and ground together and broke in pieces, and no one had strength enough to restrain or tame him. Night and day among the tombs on the mountains, he was always shrieking and screaming, beating and bruising and cutting himself with stones. It's not the same thing that's going on. You see these kids with cuts all the way up their arm. They're listening to the enemy. They don't know any better. They have all this chaos going on in their mind, and they don't know what to do. And it gets so bad that the enemy talks them into killing themselves. Now, we as Christians, we need to get revelation knowledge from Jesus. We need to go to Jesus and grow up and be that bride without spot or wrinkle so that we don't lack anything and we can go and do that greater work. So don't take on the condemnation. Start with yourself. When the enemy comes and says, well, if you do that, that's going to happen. You're bad. Jesus isn't going to protect you or this or that or the other thing. And when you believe him and you freeze up because of what he said, he's going to keep doing it and keep doing it. But if you take authority over him and say, no, 
That's not true. You got to know the word. You got to know Jesus in order to take authority over the enemy. You got to know what's going on. That's why, why you got to read the word of God. That's why you got to study to show yourself approved. When Jesus walked up in this instant, the, the demon started crying, What do you have to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High? What is there in common between us? Do not begin to torment me. He recognized Jesus. Do they recognize us when we come? It needs to be that way. We need to find out who we are in Christ and command those demons to stop. And there's more than one way to command them. Train up your children. Teach them. You will not listen to the voice of the enemy. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You're beautiful. You're smart. You're supposed to help them find out what their gift is and then walk in it. When they're doing what they're created to do, they're going to be busy doing that. And then you, they won't be off in the world working to make a living where the enemy is just running rampant, trying to do his work, kill, steal, and destroy quickly before Jesus gets here. We got a part to do, and we can't do it if we're always under the condemnation of the enemy. You make a mistake, you're forgiven. Jesus will show you. If you make a mistake and you don't know Jesus, you're going to be living under that condemnation. And we need to get out of it. That's the word I have for you today. Jesus is saying, take me seriously. Don't live under condemnation. If I show you that you're on the wrong path, repent and move on, but don't be condemned. Don't live in condemnation and guilt. I bore your sickness, your disease, your sorrow, your pain. He took on your sin for you. You're forgiven. doesn't mean that you don't move on and repent. It just means you don't live in that condemnation. And you got to know the difference between following the voice of the enemy and following the voice of Jesus. And that comes by practice. And it comes by knowing that God is good and the enemy hates you. He's bad. It's black and white. And then teach your children. Don't be putting yourself down. It's not what it's about. It's about coming up higher, living that good life, being confident in him. Train your children up to be confident. You have Jesus. He's the King of kings and Lord, Lord, Lord of lords. He loves you. He thinks you're beautiful. He thinks you're gorgeous. He loves you. He, think, he, he thinks only good of you. You know, that's one of the things the enemy will tell you your children, is you're ugly. That's why they're all trying so hard to, to look good, to fit in. One kid at school says you're ugly to another kid who isn't sure of himself, who isn't brought up in the Lord, he's going to fall over. It's going to fall apart. But if you train your children up in the Lord and then you send them off to school, they're going to they're gonna say, no, I'm not. I'm not ugly. They're going to be sure of themselves. You're weird. No, I'm not. I'm not weird. You haven't met Jesus. We got we to gotta just get strong and courageous for Jesus as adults and then portray that to our children and to the lost. Don't put them on drugs. Go to the Lord. <laughs> he loves us so much. Go to him. Let me pray with you today. Lord, I just thank you and praise you for your words of wisdom today. Thank you that you've chosen us to do your work. Thank you so much that you think we're good enough, that you've gifted us to go and do what we need to do to prepare the way for you. We love you so much. We praise you, and we want to be a part of your life. Thank you for showing us what to do. Thank you that you're always there when we call on you. And I'm just praying for every person listening today 
that they would acknowledge you in their life, that they would learn to discern good from evil, that they would be able to discern your goodness and your kindness and follow you and run from the voice of the enemy. That person that's constantly condemning them. We're going to turn away from him. You're going to show us the truth. We love you. And we praise you. We give you all the glory. And Jesus wants to live. If you never asked Jesus to come live on the inside of you. He wants to come and live on the inside of you so he can be your counselor, your standby. He can be everything that you need. Everything. All the time. He's right there to comfort you, to tell you the truth, to tell you what's going on. You start feeling icky on the inside. If you're being condemned and and just starting to hate yourself, you know, that's one thing he'll do is say you hate yourself. You want to die. You can't do anything right. He's just going to go on and on and on. And then just think that he does that to your children. Isn't that a horrible thought? It is. It's a horrible thought to know that he's talking to your children. We got to stop him. Stop him. Ask Jesus to live on the inside of you. And he'll be there for you every step of the way. He said you can ask him anything and he'll give you wisdom without holding back. So Jesus has a word for us today. He's saying, I am here. I'm just a breath away, and you can trust me. You will never be disappointed if you trust me. I have. I have come that you could have a good life. I care about you. I will help you. Just come to me. I'm here. He's so sweet. He's so kind. He wants to set you free. You don't have to be controlled by the enemy. He's already made provision for that. Isn't that amazing? So um, I would really appreciate it if you would like my video, of course, if you liked it, and share it because... I really think that God is giving me some amazing messages. I don't come up with these by myself. I'm totally reliant on him. I'm totally reliant on him. And, and a lot of things I already know, of course, um, most of it because he's taught me and, and he wants me to share with you what I know. And of course, he wants to share, wants you to share the video so others can know. I mean, this message alone, to know that Jesus is the answer, that you don't have to put your kids on medication, that they don't have to, you can teach them to not listen to the voice of the enemy. Maybe you've been stuck in self-condemnation and you learn today, you don't need to live condemned. It's just a voice. It's just, he's just a liar. Don't you want more people to know that? Don't you want everyone to know that? Jesus wants everyone to know that. He wants everyone to know the truth. We all got a part to tell. So please share my videos and subscribe so you don't miss anything. Jesus is coming and we got to be ready. Thank you so much for listening today. God bless you.